ve Hacı Muhammed Bahattin Nakşibendi El Buhari, Mevlana Celaleddin El Rumi, Mevlana Zeyahuddin Halid El Bağdadi, Sahibü Zaman Kıbleti İslam Şeyh Mevlana Muhammed Nazım Adel El Ekani, Sahibü Seyf Şeyh Abdülkerim El Kırbüs El Rabbani Kaddesallahu Esrarum Hazıratın Ervahi için, Hademül Harameynü Şerifeyn Yavuz Sultan Selim Han, Ebu'l Fetvel Mahazi Fahti Sultan Mehmet Han, ve Serdar-ı Hakan Sultan Abdülhamid Han Cennet Mekan, Firdevs-i Aşiyan Hazıratın Evrahına ve Avn inayetine, Alel husus bu caminin bayanisi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş, imam mezin kayın ve cemaatinin ve kahve-i el imanın ervahı için, Allah rızası için el-Fatiha. Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, minnallah ve melaiketem yusannun alen nebi. Ya eyyühellezine amenu sallu aleyhi ve sellimu teslima Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala ali seyyidina Muhammed Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Hayy aleyhissalâm Hayy aleyhissalâm Hayy alel felah Hayy alel felah Allahu ekber Allahu ekber La ilahe illallah Elhamdülillah Elhamdülillah Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Rahmetullah Teala ve nasafir ve şerru en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Ve şerru enne seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve rasuluhu sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zvacihi ve ashabi tabi'in hulafi rahşidin mahadim min ba'di. Ve zemiyeti ala tahkik, uhuzu zamminu alameti hulafi rasulü ala tahkik. Umar al-Mu'minin, Hazreti Ebu Bakı Umar Usman ve Ali. Ve ala baki sabit tabi'in, Rıdun ve ta'ala alihi mecma'in, Ya yuhal mu'minul hazirun, Zekun Allah ta'ala, Ve inna Allah hamel lezine tekav lezine hum muhsinun. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin, Ve salatu ve selamu ala şerafil amya ve mürselin, Sayyidina Mevlana Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. All praises are due to Allah, The Lord of the universes. All praises are due to Allah, who addresses his beloved والسلام, in the Holy Quran saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I swear by the morning brightness and by the night when it is stillest, your Lord has not abandoned you, nor does he hate you. And definitely what will come later will be better for you than the first. And truly your Lord will give unto you so that you will be pleased. Did he not find you an orphan and protect you? Did he not find you wandering and direct you? Did he not find you in need and make you rich? So don't oppress the orphan and don't turn the one who is asking for something away. But as for the bounty of your Lord, tell about it. Sadaqallahalazim. May peace and blessings be upon the Sultan of creation, Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad We are praising that Holy Prophet with the words of our great Sultan, the Shahid, Sultan Abdul Aziz Khan, Jinnaz Mekan, who said in his letter to Peygamber Efendi wasalam, As-salatu wassalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. As-salatu wassalamu alayka ya Habibullah. As-salatu wassalamu alayka ya 
Prophet of the Ummat. As salatu wa salamu alayka, ya intercessor of the Ummat. May peace and blessings be upon him, his noble family, and his blessed companions. He is the unchanging sign of perfection and generosity who fulfills the conditions of friendship. The one that Allah says, if it wasn't for you, I would not have created the universes. The root of the pride of the universes. The master of the masters, our intercessor, our refuge, whose every action is pure and delicate. Even the dust of his feet is illuminated. The greatest teacher of manners to, man to creation, whose face is perfumed with atar whose love has filled the whole universe, the last of the prophets and their safety, the master of judgment day, the ornament of the gathering of oneness, the decoration of the palace of prophethood, the judge of the court of messengerhood, the prophet of those who want to enter the way of Allah, who is Halim, the beloved of Allah, who is Rahim, with a description of all these qualities, I'm speaking about only one, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa May peace and blessings be upon the Fakhulafa Rashidin, our masters, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Osman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. May peace and blessings be upon the Mashaykh of the Osman Al Naqshbandi way, the heroes of the Maidan of Wilayat. May peace and blessings be upon the Padishahs of the Ottoman Empire, the beloveds of Allah and His Prophet, who spread the mercy of Allah to the weak and brought the justice of Allah upon the oppressors. May Allah make their return to be soon. May Allah love those who love them. May Allah curse those who hate them. Amin. Ya al mu'minun, O believers, shukur, alhamdulillah, that we have been given the grant of being able to say the shahadat. That we can say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. These words, they are a treasure that we must guard. If we keep this treasure, we are in safety. If we lose this treasure, if we die without this shahadat, we have lost everything. Understand the power of the shahadat that Sa'ad al-Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al-Kibri Siyah Rabbani Karnasasir, our guide, is teaching us, saying, Holy Prophet is saying, anyone who believes in Allah and His Prophet, if they die with that faith, they will enter to paradise. And Zayd radiallahu an was amazed. And he was asking, Ya Rasulullah, is that true? Because Hazrat Zayd, he lived a very, very, very clean life, that Sahabi. He has never known anything wrong. He never did anything wrong. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, if they are doing crimes, are they still going to enter to paradise? He wasalam, said, if they are doing crimes, and if they go out from this world with that shahadat, they are still going to enter to paradise. Hazrat Zayd was more surprised and said, Ya Rasulullah, if they're doing adultery, they are still going to go to paradise. He والسلام, said, if they are doing adultery and they are asking forgiveness from Allah and they go out from this world with the shahadat, they are still entering into paradise. Hazrat Zayd was a little bit more surprised, like he was trying to think, how can it be? And asking more and more, and the Holy Prophet was saying, even if Zayd doesn't like it, they are going to enter to paradise. But their paradise will be different than Zayd's paradise. O oh, believers, understand how merciful our Allah is. Holy Prophet is saying, Allah made mercy into 100 parts. He has kept 99 parts with himself and sent down one part to the earth. And just because of that one part, the creation is merciful so much that a horse 
raises a hoof over its child out of fear of hurting it. Oh, believers, are we understanding how merciful and great our Lord, Allah, our Rahman, and our Rahim is? Are we understanding how full of pity and mercy our Holy Prophet, والسلام, who is Rauf and Rahum, Rahim, is for us? These words must make us to wake up to the mercy of our Lord. Today, the whole of mankind, this Umat, the people of the Ahir of the Ahir Zaman, who have become completely a people without any mercy. We don't know what mercy is. We got used to it and we become very cruel. And because we are cruel, we cannot understand the mercy of our Lord and our Prophet. We want mercy only for ourselves. Yes, when we do wrong, when the punishment we have earned to ourselves comes, we say mercy and we beg for mercy. But when we deal with the people around us, with our own brothers and sisters, with our family members, with other believers, with other humans, with other creatures, that time we forget about mercy. That time, not only we ask for the heaviest judgment, that time we become the biggest tyrants. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us mercy to us if we say that shahadat. But He has sent His Prophet والسلام, as a mercy to us, showing us the way to mercy and how to act and behave in this world with that mercy. We cannot just say, okay, Allah is merciful and we can do whatever we want. That mercy is not for those who are stubborn and who are arrogant. That mercy is not for those who act as tyrants on the earth because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Bismillah rahman rahim Allah does not love the tyrants. Sadaqallahu azim There is a condition for those who are seeking the mercy of Allah and His Prophet. There is a condition for those who want to fit to the hadith of Hazrat Zayd that they will be shown mercy just for saying the shahadat. We must be merciful to others. Holy Prophet said in Hadith Sharif that for 1400 years was the first Hadith that Muslim children learned. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim They learned this Hadith. Those who are merciful will be shown mercy by the most merciful. Be merciful to those on the earth and the one above the heavens will have mercy upon you. And the Prophet ﷺ is also saying, be merciful to others and you will receive mercy. Forgive others and Allah will forgive you. And he ﷺ is saying very clearly, Allah is only merciful with those who show mercy to others. So how are we going to check if we are showing mercy to others? How are we going to check if we are being a tyrant to others? How can you know if you are merciful or a tyrant when your ego is riding on your neck? How can you know if you are merciful or a tyrant when shaitan is swimming in our blood, in our veins? Today's people, 21st century people, we think that we are the most merciful that ever came on earth. We say we are enlightened, we are humanists, we live carbon-free, cruelty-free. We are so good, so good. From our food to our clothes to our cars to our roads to our water, everything is being produced on the foundation of cruelty, of slavery, of oppression, of tyranny, of zulm. This is what it's like in the Ahir Zaman. Don't make no mistake. We are living, we are like those people that Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, radiallahu an, rahmatullah alayh, talked about. That when he was in jail for speaking the truth, one of the jail guards came and said, Ya Abu Abdullah, 
the hadith about tyrants and those who help them. Is it sahih? And Imam Ahmad said, yes. And the guard said, so am I considered a helper of the tyrants? Because in that hadith, Prophet is saying, those who help the tyrants, they are also going to be punished just like the tyrant. So he's asking, am I considered a helper of the tyrants? And Imam Muhammad said, no. You are not a helper of the tyrants. The helpers of the tyrants are those that comb your hair, wash your clothes, prepare your meals and buy and sell fra- from you. He's saying this to the guard. Saying to the guard, you are not the tyrant. You are not a helper of the tyrant. Because the helpers of the tyrants are those that comb your hair, wash your clothes, prepare your meals and buy and sell from you. As for you, you are one of the tyrants themselves. This is our condition of the world that we're living in today. Yet, how many imams are speaking about this? How many scholars that are concentrating on tajweed, concentrating on fiqh, is even mentioning this? How many of those who are claiming to be on the spiritual way are making mankind to realize this? That whatever we have today, it is based on a system of cruelty and zoom. And how many are advising us how to run away from this system and how to beat this system with the pleasure of Allah and His Prophet? Sahibul Saif, Sheikh Abdul Karim al Kibrisi Rabbani is speaking. He is speaking about the cruelty of the age we are living in. And he is saying, there are children in Africa dying from hunger with white eyes, black skin. Their eyes is looking. The skin is dark. They cannot move from hunger and they die. They are not dying. They are looking with their eyes open, their white eyes open, looking to the world, speaking to you, saying, I am not dying, but you are dead. You are all living dead. You are coming to this country, sucking every richness, and you're not giving me my share to eat. You are dead, O oh, capitalist ones, O oh, white men, O oh, Americans, O oh, Europeans, O oh, Middle Eastern ones, O oh, Russians. That's what they are looking and crying for you. You are dead. They are passing to a clean life. They are passing clean to a clean life, but we, we are dead. Because we have problems. Because we have nothing else to think except our problems. Yes, you have problems. Day and night, making problems to your own selves and even forget how to cry. You, st- you don't know how to cry. How are you going to understand? You have worries, right? Continue with your worries. But we are all responsible, at least If you cannot do anything, cry. But no, you lost everything. Feelings are gone, dead, living dead. That's what those children, they are saying. That's because you are not feeling anything at all. You're not seeing anything anymore. You are not understanding anything anymore because you have died worrying for your selfish, egoistic lifestyle. Yes, that's what is happening. And that's what happened to us. And yes, we should move. Wake up because Allah's revenge is coming. It's coming to every one of us. I don't know who is going to escape from that, but the revenge is coming. Oh, believers. Do you know how you will check to see if I'm a merciful one or I'm a zalim? If you have someone to speak to you with these kinds of words, if you have someone to warn you, if you have put, if you have someone to put the fear of Allah into you, if you have someone to put a mirror up to your face and say you are a tyrant, fix yourself before Allah's revenge comes. 
Without that, we are going to fool ourselves into thinking that we are angels. When in reality, we are the slaves of shaitan. Without a guide in front of us, we will be lost. And the ones without a shaykh, the shaykh is shaitan. But at the same time, we will think that we are the best. Understand that this is the evil of the system that is all around us today, that it swallows everyone and brings them into tyranny. So what is the advice of the Holy Prophet ﷺ for this time? How do we escape from the web of tyranny that is all around us at this time? Holy Prophet ﷺ said, there will come a time when the best property of a Muslim will be sheep, which he will take to the tops of mountains and the places of rainfall in order to flee with his religion away from the fitna. Our Shaykh is opening this hadith for us more, saying, this is the order of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. When those days are coming, don't stay in the cities. Don't stay in the crowded areas. Move up to the mountains. If you're not finding good friends, stay alone. Don't worry what you're going to eat. Get one sheep and live with that sheep. Don't interfere into anything. Don't run to read too much, to know too much, because there's going to be confusion and fitna everywhere. And you're going to get wrong information and you're going to mix yourself with those wrong information and you're not going to be able to come out from that mess. These are the warnings coming to us from a holy prophet alayhi salatu 1400 years ago. If we are taking it seriously, we will be the winner. But if we are not taking it seriously, then you have no way that you are going to see because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us and grant us to know one of his most beloved ones in the divine presence in this century. How you are going to look at his face. How you're going to say that I am following you. How we are going to say that when everything he's saying to us, we are doing otherwise. We must run to fix ourselves. Now other difficult days are waiting for us. All signs that the Holy Prophet ﷺ is saying, it is right in front of the door. The door is opening. We are going to face it. More difficulties are waiting for us. It is not going to become easier before the difficulties are happening. If you are in this situation now, it will be disaster then. You will be taken away. You cannot be living on the face of the earth then. Impossible for those who are calling themselves Hakkani. Impossible for them to be with Mahdi salam if they are doing the drop of shaitani work. Impossible they will be taken away. So what are we going to do? We are going to go away from the fitna. Even if someone cannot physically separate from the fitna, at least in their heart, we must separate from the fitna. And if physically you are separated from the fitna, do not invite the fitna into your heart. And we must be busy with the work of Allah. As Shaykh Effendi is saying, even a drop of shaitanic work, it is not acceptable. What is the work of Allah? What is the work of Rasulullah What is the work of the shaykhs? We must look. And we must find out. What is Shaykh Maulana busy with? What is Shaykh Effendi busy with? What are we busy with? Hold on to your guide and be in the Jamaat. Take care of your faith and care for each other. When you do that, you will bring the mercy of the Holy Prophet ﷺ to people. We must make people's lives a little bit easier. We must be part of a community, of a jamaat, to help people in that community. Don't take your wealth, your energy, your time, your passion and be selfish with it 
and keep it to yourself or only give it to your family or those that you like. No. That is not the sunnah of the Prophet That is not the sunnah of the Sahabi Kiram or the Ottomans. But to use it to look to others, to see how to help them, how to bring mercy to them. That time, inshallah Rahman, we are living like a believer. That time we are living like an ummati of the Holy Prophet wasalam. And that time, inshallah Rahman, we are living our shahadat. And that time the mercy will reach to us, inshallah. We are doing so many wrong things. But even if we are doing wrong things, even if we are doing wrong things, and if we are running to bring lightness to others, it will be a source of mercy for us. Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu an is saying, in the time of the Holy Prophet wasalam, there was a man called Abdullah who was nicknamed the donkey, Himar. But he would always make the Prophet wasalam, laugh. The man, he was punished for drinking alcohol, for drinking liquor. And then he did it again, and he was punished again. And another man among the people said, Ya Allah, curse him. How many times does he keep doing this? Rasulullah said, don't curse him. Wallahi, I know that he loves Allah and he loves his messenger. Definitely, that Sahabi, that one that the Holy Prophet called donkey, he is better than all of us. He is a Sahabi. And what was he doing? He was bringing lightness to the Holy Prophet ﷺ and making him laugh, taking away people's burdens. And what he did came from a pure heart. When he did that to the Prophet ﷺ, it came from the love. And that saved him. Are we doing the same? Are we at least smiling to others? Are we looking to others to say, this person is having a problem? How can I help him? This person looks like something is bothering them. Let me talk to that person. I haven't seen this person for a few days. Let me check if they're okay. Is our heart moving this much, at least? It must. It has to move that much. Because we are following the way of the Prophet of Mercy. We are following the one who said, والسلام, the most beloved people to Allah, the most beloved people to Allah are those who are most helpful to the people. The most beloved deed, action to Allah is to make a Muslim happy or to remove one of his troubles or to forgive his debt, or to feed his hunger. That I walk with a brother regarding a need is more beloved to me than if I isolate myself in this masjid in Medina for a month. Whoever swallows his anger, then Allah will cover his faults. Whoever suppresses his rage, even though he could fulfill his anger if he wished, then Allah will secure his heart on the day of resurrection. Whoever walks with his brother regarding a need until it secures for him, then Allah, the exalted, will make his footing firm across the bridge on the day when the footings are shaken. We are following the Naqshbandi way. One of the great hajagan of this way, Waja Ubaidullah Ahrar, Qadazullah Sir said, It was not in books that I discovered tasawuf, but through hizmat to my fellow creatures. 
Everyone has a road to follow and mine has been the road of hizmet, of service. I try to be service, I try to be of service to everyone of whom I have high hopes. Alhamdulillah, we are blessed to be murids of Sahib al Saif. We are blessed to be in the Osman al Naqshbandi way, following Sultan al Awliya, Shaykh Mawlana Muhammad Nazim al Haqqani. Sahib al Saif, Karna Sasir, is saying, I am trying to do work here. I am trying to prepare this place for Allah's sake, for you, for people who are going to come. I am under the slander and the attack from every side. I am clean from all that, inshallah, Rahman. I am living for Allah and I am going to die for Him. I am not living for my children or my wife or my mother, or my father, or nobody. I'm living for Allah, not for anybody, not for you too. I'm living for Allah, and He gave me this life. He's going to take this life, and I'm going. I am ready, inshallah. I'm keeping my wudu all the time. I don't know when it's going to happen. If He is coming now, I'm going to say, Assalamu alaikum, and I'm going to sajda, inshallah, and I go out from this world. So think on it, think good, because if you are going, if you are doing something other than that, you are not going to see me again, not in dunya, not in ahirat. If, if we are going to the same place, you are going to see me. You are going to see me, I am going to tell you now, smile and walk with me. Otherwise, don't walk with me. I have that right. Don't think I'm afraid to speak now because you are claiming that you are close to Shaykh Mawlana or you are close to the Prophet. If something is right and I know that it is right 100% and I'm learning from the teachings of the Holy Prophet wasalam, that is right. That is our master and our guide. He lived according to those words, he passed according to those words. We are almost reaching to his mawlid. He opened a way for us. That is the way of service, the way of community, the way of sohbat in the darkest darkness of Ahir Zaman. He opened a way for us with ease. If we stay, we will smile and walk with him in this life and ahirat inshallah if not may allah protect us from any other road may allah free us from zulm may allah make us from those whose hearts are moving to show mercy to others may allah make us from those who cry for this ummah may allah make us from those who live for this ummah may allah count us as the people of hizmat may allah do not count us as people of fitna and zulm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open doors for us to be merciful so that we may reach to His mercy and the mercy of our Holy Prophet and the mercy of our Shaykh. May our name never be written in the book of tyrants. Amin, amin, amin. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Alazim, alazim. La ilaha illa wa hayr qayyim wa ta'ala. La ilaha illa Allah wa ta'ala sharika la ilaha Allahumma